Hi, this is Brooke Matsuo from Ravenswood. Today I'll be talking about Remote Credential Guard, its benefits, and how to configure it. So let's talk about the benefits of Remote Credential Guard. As the name implies, it helps protect your credentials when using remote desktop protocol or RDP sessions. Your credentials are not sent to the remote server and your credentials remain on the client device. So if you inadvertently log on to a compromised target device, your credentials are protected. Also, your credentials are prevented from being used after you've disconnected your RDP session as the connection back to your client device is no longer there. This is because the connection to your client machine's local security authority or LSA no longer exists once you disconnect from your RDP session. Another benefit of Remote Credential Guard is a single sign-on-like experience when you connect to your remote host. So there's no need to enter a username or password. So remote Credential Guard is a credential protection capability, but it's different than other capabilities like restricted admin mode and Credential Guard. For more information about those capabilities, please visit these links. So what are the requirements for Remote Credential Guard? On the client side, the Remote Desktop Client Application in Windows, or MSTSC.exe, must be used. The Universal Windows Platform, or UWP app, is not supported. For the remote host, it must be running Windows Server 2016 or later, and Remote Credential Guard needs to be enabled by either using Group Policy, or you can edit the registry directly. Also, the user must be granted RDP access to the remote host. This can come through membership in the local remote desktop users group or the local administrators group. In order to use Remote Credential Guard, you need to make sure that you're appropriately licensed. Remote Credential Guard licensing is available to Windows Pro, Pro Education, SE, Windows Enterprise E3 and E5, and also Windows Education A3 and A5. Here's a link to the Windows edition and licensing requirements for Remote Credential Guard. How do you configure Remote Credential Guard on the client? To enable Remote Credential Guard on client computers, it can be done in three different ways. One is using group policy. Another way is configuring the settings using an MDM solution such as Microsoft Intune. And the third option is actually not configuring anything at all. You can launch the Remote Desktop Client app, mstsc.exe, with the Remote Guard switch. If you choose to use group policy to configure Remote Credential Guard, here are the options you'll choose. You'll need to enable one of the two options. If you choose to use Microsoft Intune to deploy Remote Credential Guard settings to the clients, these are the settings that you'll use. In order to use Remote Credential Guard, the remote host also has to be configured. This can be done either through group policy or directly in the registry. In order to configure the remote host using group policy, here's a setting that needs to be enabled. If you decide to configure the remote host directly by editing the registry, this is the setting that needs to be configured. Let's walk through an example of how remote credential guard might be used. First, the user logs on to a domain join workstation and launches mstsc.exe using the remote guard switch. They then specify the remote computer that they want to connect to. And then once they hit enter, the connection to the remote host succeeds and the user is logged in automatically without having to enter a username or password. Just a note, this can also work from Azure AD joined or Microsoft Enter joined computers as well without the need for a domain join or hybrid join machine. If you've deployed Windows Hello for Business Cloud Kerberos Trust, you could also connect to an ADDS joined host using a Microsoft Enter joined client, as long as that client can authenticate using Kerberos. Microsoft also has some additional considerations at this link. In the additional considerations, Microsoft talks about additional technologies that should be deployed along with Remote Credential Guard, but are not actually necessary in order for Remote Credential Guard to work. One of these technologies that Microsoft recommends to be deployed along with Remote Credential Guard is the local admin password solution or Microsoft LAPS. It is not actually a requirement in order for Remote Credential Guard to work. However, it is recommended to be deployed along with Remote Credential Guard. To recap, Remote Credential Guard helps protect your credentials for RDP sessions. Credentials remain 
on the client device and are not sent to the remote host. It uses Kerberos only. Once the RDP session is disconnected, your credentials can no longer be used by an attacker on the remote host. It provides a single sign-on like experience for RDP. Clients can be configured either using an MDM solution like Microsoft Intune or Group Policy, or not at all. The host can be configured either using Group Policy or directly in the registry. And also, be sure to make sure that your client, your host, and your user account meets Microsoft's OS and licensing requirements. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about Remote Credential Guard. For more advice, content, and videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, YouTube channel, and follow us on LinkedIn. We're constantly creating new content, so be sure to come back and check it out.